I wonder how's the sound on this. I hope it's coming out pretty good. I don't know. <clears throat> I was going to talk tonight on that foundations of faith about about something that's real, really important that I don't think a lot of people understand. There is uh, there is a scar of Christianity. There's several scars of Christianity, but one of the scars of Christianity is the idea that someone's going to be there. That someone's going to reach out and based on your probationary status of life, um, someone will be there if you're good enough. The toughest times. There'll be a great comforter. There'll be a hand to give you a, a pickup. And here's the real ugly truth about life. And nowhere is it brought to the forefront in greater detail than in also true. Sometimes in life you've got to be your own hero. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Nobody's going to be there. And in truth, if they were, they'd have to negotiate your thought process to be able to help you to begin with. You've got to step up to the plate. And one of the great things about Ossetru and everything that I've talked about with this foundations of, of faith is that you have what it takes to be the hero in your own life. You don't have to wait on someone to say, you have permission. It's okay to get up. It's okay to feel good. It's okay to feel bad. You have to figure out in this whole deal of Ossetru and all of this lore, all of those men and women figured out how to stand up in the toughest of times. And some of the best things that we have going for us in Ossetru is the idea we, we can stand up and be our own fucking hero. Because nobody's going to, there's no knight in shining armor. And as a friend told me not long ago, that knight in shining armor, he always, or the cowboy, he always rides off into the distance. That bastard's always riding off by himself. He comes in, Captain Save-A-Ho, handles some business, and then rides off by himself. She's still standing there. At some point, you're going to have to figure out, I love me more than anybody else loves me. And that's a hell of a trick to pull on ourselves. Because most of us have grown up with the idea that, well, you're only worth loving under these conditions. When I met Stephanie, one of her cousins told her, nobody loves Brian Wilson more than Brian Wilson. And then she made fun of that. That was such a funny thing to everybody. That sounds so vain, so arrogant, so, so Carly Simon, you're so vain kind of thing, which I kind of enjoy. But the truth of the matter is, I ain't got time to wait on somebody else to say, Brian, you're good enough. I got to go get it and get it done. Nobody's going to hand you shit anymore, especially not in Ossetru. We're not going to say, well, we'll get everybody together. If you're in a tribe, they'll be there to help you, give you a helping hand. But when somebody dies, when somebody's born, when you lose a partner, when you lose a child, when you lose something precious in your life, when something goes bad, when you lose a job, honey, baby, you're on your own. It's time to be your own fucking hero. Stand up, do it right, get it done, one foot in front of the fucking other, because our Lord tells me we got what it takes to do that. How many men and women in our Lord have stood up, put a sword in their hand? And better yet, there's one in particular that stood, stood up, learned the use of the runes, and earned the right to be called Rig himself. Now, not only a king, but the kind of person worthy of getting a seat at the table of the gods themselves. Imagine the possibility in that in your own life. If you could get your thinking process to the point where nobody loves me like I love me. Because I look back over my life and there's been some times when I have, if anybody had treated me as bad as I treated myself, I'd have beat their ass. And yet here I am doing it to myself. My own thought process. I'm a victim. Poor me, poor me, poor me another fucking drink. We ain't got that privilege anymore. See, because when we step into this realm of Ossetru, all of a sudden, it's up to us to shoulder this responsibility of how we think, how we act, because we are our deeds. The thoughts become actions, actions become deeds. Deeds become history. They build our lives. They build the foundation of everything we want to become. No one's going to do that for us. <laughs> we have to be our own hero. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of people in this world that will love you with everything they have. They will stand beside you. They will hold your hand. They will encourage you. They will support you. They will be your friend. They will be everything about what you want to become. But you, and only you, 
are the one that's going to take that first step and start believing in yourself, no matter the pain. Doesn't matter what, and it might cost you more than you think it's worth. (laughs) But at some point in our own stories, we got to quit playing a walk-on part in somebody else's tail. Well, I'm good enough to be over there with that person. I'm happy enough to be over there with that person. Well, I'm pretty enough to be over there with that person. I'm strong enough to be over there with that person. Who the fuck are all them people? When are you going to be happy, strong, pretty, brave enough to stand up in your own world? (laughs) One of the principles, one of the meditations that I teach people that call me sometimes. I want you to imagine yourself squatted down with every pressure, bad idea, negative thought crushing down on you, pushing down. Now, in your mind's eye, I want you to imagine yourself standing up. And as you stand up, let those cares fall to the side. Let them fall off your shoulders. Stand up. See yourself standing in the sun. So we low. It's mentioned in Grow a Galder and Grow a Spell. This is what the mother tells the son. Stand up and be a man. Stand up and be a man and get your thought process right. You'll earn what it means to pick up those runes and shape the world you want to live in. Oh, there's the biggest scar of Christianity that mars everything we do is we're waiting on someone to tell us when to go, when to start, how to do it. Maybe sometimes all we need to do is be quiet for a minute and just take one step. (laughs) There's a hundred thousand different scenarios in the life of a human in the life of any of us that we might not ever have the right answer to. We might not ever know 100% it's going to be okay. We might not ever know 100% if what we're doing is the right thing. But at some point in our world, we got to start. We'll go back and fix it if we have to. But you got to go forward. You have to become the hero in your own story. Stop playing a walk-on part in somebody else's life, waiting on their permission to tell you it's okay to be happy with who you are, to love who you are, to be strong in who you are. I think that's one of the biggest blessings Asa True could give all of humanity. Imagine if we were confident enough to share with each other the generosity that's talked about in Tacitus. Imagine if we were confident enough in who we are to share a piece of ourselves with someone, whether they might accept it or not. Imagine if we were confident enough in ourselves to lend that helping hand or offer that encouragement without expectation of, hey, thank you. What if you never got that thank you? What if you were confident enough to do the right thing and keep moving forward in life? Holy shit. Now all of a sudden we're changing the world. Also true is that thing that allows us to become those people that everybody's waiting to show up in this world. Those confident individuals who have what it takes to do the right thing, no matter the slings and arrows they might have to withstand. That's a hero. That's a hero, guys. And that's what it means to be also true. That's what our deeds are all about. Making that sacrifice. (laughs) Because when all comes down to it, we might be the only positive example a child ever sees. We might be the only positive example to walk by a homeless person in the street. We might be the only positive example to walk through a crowd and somebody might say, you know what, I want some of what that guy has working in my life. Well, now they can become the hero in their world. What courage does it take to share love without expectation of recompense? What courage does it take (laughs) to share any part of who you are with someone that's in pain? You can't pick them up. You can't change your thought process, but you can be that example that maybe they can learn how to be the hero in their own story. It's infectious. One candle can light a thousand candles. But the Buddha said, without ever losing the intensity of its flame, Be the hero of your own story. 
you go into the work week this week, and your heart's not in it, you don't like what you're doing, do the best you can at it, and figure out what part, what role that plays in you being the hero of your own story. And if we don't play a part in it, let's start thinking about figuring out what we can do to live up to that great desire to express the best of who we are, that sense of adventure, that sense of yearning, that possibility, that longing of greatness that I think every one of us has in our hearts. Let's go out there and get it done. Be the hero in your own story this week.